Lovers in the Hat Homestead, my name is Jeff. Today's video, let's get amped up today. Let's talk a little bit about amps and let's talk about wires and how that they relate and the different voltages like 12 volts and 24 and 120 and, and alternating currents and direct current. What size wire do I use when I wire my panels to my charge controller? What size wire do I use hooking up batteries, etc.? We're going to cover that. So let's get amped. All right, so now it's time to get amped up over these wires. So let's just briefly take a look at the, the difference what I have here. I have solid wires. I have, these are the same, a stranded wire, meaning that there's a whole bunch of them in there. And then I have one wire here, but there's three here, including that ground, and then there's four in that one. So why is there four in this one and like three in this one? Well, this is considered 12 gauge and this is six gauge, but there is a 12 slash two, that's this one. This is a six slash three. I could get 12 slash three, I just don't have it. The difference is that three gives you a red one. The object of that third wire, coded wire, is in an AC application in 120 volts like your house, you might want to switch on one end of the room and a switch on the opposite of the room to control a light or a fan. So this line here will be the one that puts those two switches together and, and wires them up so that you can use both of them to operate one, one device, one appliance if you will. Um, and most of the time you're just going to use the three wires here, the, the, the dash, the slash two, if you're wiring up 120 volts. Okay. Now, why do you have stranded and why do you, why do you have stranded and why do you have solid? Solid is normally used in 120 volt applications. However, when you get really thick, like the six gauge, then it's going to probably be stranded even in a 120 volt application just because it's so thick it's hard to work with so on the wires and the ratings so on these wires they are rated like i was saying 12 gauge i've talked um six gauge um that's the thickness and then they're also rated by volts and the amps so when you look at every wire, it doesn't matter if it's solid, if it's stranded, they are rated the same. It doesn't matter if they're designed for direct current, which is DC, or alternating current, which is AC, 120 volts, 12 volts, whatever. Every wire is rated the same. When you look on the wire, and I don't know exactly how well this is going to come out. Let's see on this little piece here. I don't know how well it's going to come out, but on this piece here, it says right here, it says 600 volts. So it says 600 volts, and then as you keep going, oh, there's 600 again. Um, this is AWG12, so it's 12 gauge. So the 600 volts and that 12 gauge, 600 volts is what they're rated at. And what that basically means is, this wire can handle up to 600 volts. So I could use it in a 12 volt application, I can use it in a, in a 24 volt application, I could use it in six volts, I could use this in 120 volts if I wanted to. Now the only difference actually is, is that the amperage. So every wire, and I'll show you a, um, a chart here of the size of the wire, the gauge, and the amperage. 14 gauge is considered a 15 amp wire. A 12 gauge wire is 20 amps. A 10 gauge wire is 30 amps and, and continues. Um, six gauge is, is 60 amps. So those are the wires that I used in my application, those sizes. And those amps are important because it will handle up to those amps. So when I'm thinking about wiring my panels to my charge controller, all you really need to know is how many amps do I need to know? 
how many amps are going to travel through those wires. And based on that, we determine which size you use. You're going to want to use stranded and what size to use. Between my batteries, now that's where you get into the bigger size, and I'll show you that right about now. That's where you want at least a 4 aughts, if not bigger. And that is literally hundreds and thousands of strands of little bitty copper wires inside. And that can handle a lot of volts and a whole lot of amps. And you want that because not only do you want no loss between each connection of your battery and your batteries to your char to your inverter, but you also need to handle the amperage that you're going to draw. The amperage is going to go through those. The volts you're not too concerned about because you're not going to have 300 volts on your battery system unless you've got one hell of a, a system. And that's why the size matters. Um, I've seen some people use like the, the cables for a car. The cables for a car is not rated for the proper amps. You're going to melt that that cabling, you're going to melt that insulation, you're going to burn yourself, you're going to cause a fire. That's why it's important that you go with the right size amps. Now, one deal is, some people will ask, well, I've got so much of this solid wire and I only have some of the stranded and to run a DC application, which, you know, can't I just use this? They're the same size, they're both 12 gauge, right? Right, but direct current and your loss over a period of distance, you want stranded. That's why stranded is new, normally used for the DC application because over a distance, and I don't remember exactly what it is, but over a distance of let's say 100 feet, for an example, a 12 volt wire, a 12 gauge wire will lose so many volts. A solid wire over that same distance will lose more volts over that distance. You normally want to use the stranded because you have less loss. In a house, if you notice on appliances, on your lamps and lighting and things like that in your house, it says 110 volts. And that's because when it starts out at 120 volts, by the time it gets to the end of that run, basically, it may have already dropped down to 110 volts. And that's why a lot of appliances will still run on the 110 volts. So that about covers the wiring. There's really not too much to it. Um, most important thing when you're wiring your system is know the amps that you're going to have go through that wire so you can size it up. It's okay to go bigger, but it's not okay to go smaller. Use the stranded for DC applications for your 12 volts, your 24 volts, your 48 volts, your solid after it goes through your distribution box so it's at 120 volts you strand it from your inverter to your electrical box and you're this going to your, your outlets and your switches and things like that if you're going to use DC all the way and not going to use an inverter at all then you probably want to go with at least a 6 gauge wire which will handle 60 amps and that way you have little loss and by the time it gets to some of your um, your devices you'll still have plenty of amps left to run that device but that's how you size up some of the wiring hopefully that makes sense I know when I first started I didn't know what size to use I'm like what's the difference how do I know between 12 volts and 120 volts it's easy the gauge tells you what amps each wire is rated up to 600 volts, so it doesn't matter on your volts, but the amps matter on your wiring. That's about it. Catch my other video. I'm going to do a video on um, on the the loads, which is your 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 lamps and your your radios and things like that, and how those are rated, and s let you know that there is a difference between the rating of the wiring and the rating of that other of those devices, and it can be confusing. Thank you for watching my video today, and I appreciate you watching it all the way through there. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Every little bit helps support my channel. My name is Jeff, and you've been watching Arizona Hot Homestead.